Now we understand how this system works. We looked at all the data and we know we're looking for a small leak. It could be anywhere, but the easiest and most accessible place to start is the purge valve. Remember, the valves are responsible to seal the system so it can be airtight. And they have been opening and closing thousands of times. And on this Ford Explorer, it happens to be right in the engine bay. It's pretty easy to get to. We just have to lift off this engine cover. There's a couple fasteners that hold that down. And then it's right next to the intake. Now the canister purge valve is a simple open or closed solenoid. Now the engine creates a vacuum by the pistons coming down making the negative pressure inside the engine. That vacuum is coming from the intake and the purge valve is actually bolted right to the top of the intake. So the vacuum comes from the intake and the purge valve then once it is commanded by the computer to open it allows that vacuum to travel through this hard plastic tube all the way back so this is our easiest access point and it's the first thing we want to check. Now a lot of the older and first systems out there used to use just rubber lines but the newer cars use these hard plastic molded and sealed vacuum lines. They're less likely to leak but that's possible but let's look at the valve first. The vacuum that's in this intake needs to get through this valve so it can travel back to the canister. It's got a simple little electrical connector. Tuck that out of the way. And there's a little green clip that locks it in place. Once you get the green, green clip out, then the hard plastic line, the molded plastic line, can come off. We'll just tuck that off out of the way a little bit too. So let's take this valve off and see what we can find. There's just two little number eight bolts on it. And now the valve will just simply lift off. So this canister purge valve sits on top of the intake and vacuum is applied here. And then when the PCM opens this valve, vacuum then can go through here. So technically this should be sealed and you should be able to blow through it or suck through it making vacuum. So let's see, if I go to the vacuum side, you know it almost feels to me like something's coming through there. If I go to this side, I can hear just a little bit of seepage here. So to show you a little bit better on the video because you can't hear everything, I'm going to use this vacuum gauge. Now this is a gauge that shows vacuum or pressure. And I'm going to hook it into the output side of this valve. So when I blow through this side, you shouldn't see any change. Let's see. But when I try to suck through it or create a vacuum, you can actually see it moving. So that valve inside there is not blocking it off completely. It's leaking. Let's look at a brand new one and compare it. This is the old one. And I've got my brand new one from the parts store. And we'll hook it up the same way. I'm going to put it in here. Then if we watch my gauge, when I try to blow through it, no movement on the gauge. And when I try to draw a vacuum on it, no movement on the gauge. Again, let's go back to the other one. When I try to draw a vacuum on here, or when I blow through it. So this old vacuum 
control valve or the vacuum purge valve is leaking. It's not leaking a lot because I can't blow through it really heavy, but it's leaking a little. And our code says we have a little leak, a small leak. This is leaking. So our critical thinking is telling me that this could be the problem. It at least is a problem, whether or not it's the whole leak, I don't know yet, but this is leaking. So what we're going to do is replace this, and then we're going to let the computer that found the leak in the first place test this whole system again and tell us whether or not we fixed it. If we did, there should no longer be a little leak. If we didn't, we'll need to keep looking. Now after we've got our repair made, it's time to go for a drive. Now the computers in these vehicles are very good at what they do. They monitor the system all the time, and if there's a problem, of course, they'll turn the check engine light on. We make our repair. Why not let the computer that is monitoring it tell us that the repair has been made, that the problem is no longer there? So what we're going to do is go for a drive, let the EVAP system monitor, run and just like it told us earlier that we had a small leak we should be able to let it run and it will tell us that that small leak is no longer there or our problem has been fixed. So now we know that the computer has run its system, it's checked everything and now it's reporting that all systems have passed, there's no more small leak. So how does the PCM know that the leak is fixed? Well, it runs its tests again, and it has the large leak test, and it passed, the medium leak, and it passed, and then it runs the small leak, and it passed. But how well did it pass? This is when it passed. Let's look at the screen back when it actually failed, the small leak failed. Notice that it has a value of 0.75, but the maximum that it would allow is 0 0.40. 0.75 is a lot greater, so the value was so high that it failed this test. But now when it passes, we have a value of zero. So not only did it, does it not leak, it doesn't leak at all. That's why it passed the test. So this confirms that we have fixed the problem. Now there are methods that you could use to actually close the purge valve and seal it, close the vent valve and seal it, put a vacuum in the system and watch the fuel tank pressure sensor and watch to see if the pressure holds. But that's what the computer is doing anyway. That's what its job is. So why not let it do its job and tell us that we've made the repair? So once again, it's our knowledge, our critical thinking that has helped us make this repair. Sure, there are tools and equipment and strategies and all kinds of things we can do. But probably the most effective thing that we can do is think it through.